Hello and welcome to Edward De Vere's Life Dates. My name is Glenn Alexander and thank you very much for clicking on this video and being here with me today. Uh, so I find this really, really exciting uh, and I'd love to share with you today uh, some new, quite interesting things. Um, before I start, I should probably give you the forewarning I'm doing this without notes, so I may say something random or uh, there may be the odd um, or are. That being said, let us begin. Uh, so here's the man himself. This is Edward de Vere and here's his life dates. The 12th of April 1550 to the 24th of June 1604. Now I did some light analysis of this uh, in a hastily written book, uh, the author. Uh, but today what I'm going to do is really kind of delve into these uh, dates and also try to uh, let the man himself uh, explain to you what he's doing with his dates. Uh, so I'm going to start where I normally start with the Art of English Posey. Um, in the last couple of videos I've been looking particularly at uh, this printing device here which is uh, the Ancora Spy, uh, which and we've asked some interesting questions and see where that led, which uh, led to some quite bold conclusions which I do believe to be correct. Um, it's, it's a masterpiece. Uh, please do go read this book. It's very important. Um, and also we have the printing preface, uh, the, which is also super important uh, because it's not by Richard Field. Uh, it's actually by the author of this originally uh, unauthored book. Um, once you've read the entirety of the book and uh, the figures as well, Hopefully it becomes clear that this is actually by the author of this book. Um, I have explained this in some previous videos, so you can go watch that. Uh, but today, what I'd like us to focus on particularly is this date, the 28th of May 1589, because that's really important. And I hope when we return to this uh, full circle, as you may say, uh, you may understand this and, and see this in a different light than you already see this now. Uh, so, uh, today we are going to be talking about this book. I mentioned in the uh, last video, I believe uh, this is actually um, translated by Edward de Vere. Um, it's a wonderful book. Uh, as I told you, the, the title page are really important for um, ascertaining whether or not uh, de Vere is involved. There's loads of things you can watch that in my previous video, Writ in Brass part two if you want to know why we're going to kind of really zone in on this very important book the elements of geometry of the most ancient philosopher euclid of uh, megara uh, faithfully now first translated into the english tongue by h billingsley citizen of london whereunto are annexed certain scholarly annotations and inventions of the best mathematicians both of time past and in this hour age with a very fruitful preface preface made by mr uh, john d id uh, specifying the chief mathematical sciences what they are and whereunto uh, commodious uh, where also are disclosed certain new secrets mathematical and mechanical until these our days greatly missed that's important which is why i'm emphasizing it uh, and also i did tell you you can like with any of these books if there's a to the reader read it um because it it, it pretty much is devere giving himself away uh, let's just look at the first line i'm not going to read all of it you can read that for yourself uh so to the reader there is gentle reader nothing or here is gentle reader nothing if you so wish to read it like that uh, nothing, of course, is important because, as I keep harping on, uh, De Vere uh, is becoming nothing by his own hand. He is becoming nothing. Um, it goes all the way back to that Aristophanes joke that I keep mentioning. Um, uh, we are going to look at the last part of this same to the reader bit with a nice shape to it. He does like his shape poems. Well, perceive the fruit and gain which I require for these. My pains and travail shall be nothing else. 
but only that thou, gentle reader, will gratefully accept the same, and that thou mayst, may is important, as I have uh, been harping on, thereby receive some profit, and moreover, to excite and stir up others uh, learned to do the like, and to take pains in that behalf, by means whereof our English tongue shall no less be enriched with good authors. Uh, there are other strange tongues of the Dutch, French, Italian and Spanish in which are read all good authors in a manner found amongst the Greeks and Latins. So De Beer, as I've said in my last video, uh, is translating a lot of the amazing learning from antiquity into the English tongue, predominantly uh, to enrich it. Um, he's starting, in a sense, an English Renaissance and giving us... Um, a richer uh, language, which is the chiefest cause that amongst uh, the uh, do flourisheth, and, uh, amongst it, uh, the do flourisheth so many cunning and skilful men in the invention of strange and wonderful things as these are days, we see their do, which fruit and gain if I attain unto, it shall encourage me hereafter if such like sort to translate and set abroad some other good authors, both pertaining to religion, as partly I have already done, and also pertaining to the mathematical uh, arts. Um, that's gentle reader, farewell. Uh, yeah, I did notice that art uh, with the E on the end, which we have already seen multiple times, and yeah, the, I don't know why, uh, the, the abroad, um, I spent 20 minutes just relishing the uh, the ob from the ad Latin to and of course that or that we've been talking about in some previous videos. Go watch if you want to know what that means. Uh, I also have kept um, mentioning the faults escaped, uh, which are really important because you're going to find quite a few deliberate faults uh, in these books. And uh, if I just alert your attention is really read it and i enjoy this but i just want to alert your attention uh, to the most capitalized uh, word in this which is printers print printer printed printer printing so the printing is really important because de Vere is this printer uh, who is giving us uh, this work and i'm also just going to highlight this bit uh, and indeed sometimes for want of argus eyes uh, I'm just going to leave that there and we'll come back to it and you might enjoy it. Uh, so the two things we're going to look at in Euclid's um, uh, elements are firstly this error here. Uh, errata uh, lib number five. And we're also going to look at the last page just as the first page of a title page, which I'm also going to uh, frequently refer back to, is really important. So is the last. First and last are really important, as I keep telling you. So we're also going to have a look at this last page, which is a nice portrait um, of J.D. Um, uh, printed by John Day, uh, our printer. So a nice portrait of the printer, the last page of this book um, on mathematics. Uh, so let's start to try to understand Edward de Vere's dates. There they are at the top there, the 12th of April 1550 to the 24th of June 1604. Now just the first thing I want to highlight is this 5. 5, of course, in Roman numerals is V. Um, now the first time I actually came to, when I was doing a bit of research, uh, the first time I came to this book was actually a uh, transcription um, and here is the transcription um, at the bottom there uh, of the same thing. And if you just compare them, you'll notice it maketh 12 more than 17 by 5. It maketh 24 more than 17 by 7. Now, I've, I found uh, an original digitised copy of it. And you'll notice it says it maketh 22 there. And I was like, OK, right, well, let's let's just be really sceptical. I encourage everyone, including myself, to be sceptical. Uh, like we all fall uh, uh, prey to confirmation bias. We need to be sceptical with our own thinking. I always question everything that I think. I'm There's definite errors in my thinking, just as there are in yours. So let's just accept that and let's kind of go into it. Let's not settle uh, with this. Let's ask questions about it. Uh, and see where it leads us. So if we just look at that 22, now the discrepancy is between this one 
and this two. Well, that two looks a bit weird for a start, doesn't it? Um, because if we have a look at that one, you can see mm, it doesn't really look like the other the other twos. It's it shares some characteristics of the two, but it also shares some characteristics of the one. Okay, fair enough. I'm I'm not happy with that though. And that's just interpretation. Let's let's go into it a little bit deeper. Well, actually, if you look at the front of the book and you look at what um, Marinus is pointing to, uh, well, let's well look. It's he's pointing to this weird-looking two of twenty-two and also twenty-one, which actually you could argue is an anagram of twelve. So the guy in the front of the book is pointing to this. Relevant, I think so. Uh, but more so, if we actually have a look uh, at where it is referring to and this error within the book itself, you're going to come to this, which is very important. Uh, I'll just It's all to do with proportions and uh, comparisons. We have this line here, uh, which is 17 in its length, which is uh, divided into two parts, 12 and 5. Uh, and if we try to find uh, the error, well, this is the error that it's referring to in its correction uh, that it tells you to make, um, which is uh, the line, uh, the whole line AB, uh, for take once it make but uh, 12, uh, sorry, AC, uh, makes but 12, which is less than 17, and taken twice it maketh 22. Notice you've got the maketh there as well. Uh, it makes... 22. Well, this is a guy uh, who's translated one of the most influential books on mathematics uh, all the way up until the 20th century. It was still a, a go-to on geometry and number. Um, so this is um that, that's quite a simple error to make, but errors errors happen. Okay, um, but you would assume he could he could double 12, but fair enough. Um, so it never precisely maketh but two the whole blah, 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 blah. right. Well, okay, so fair enough from that point. But if you um if you then keep reading a little bit, you'll also notice we have our twelve uh, and our twenty-four again here. Okay, so we've got something to do with this twelve, this proportionality between twelve and twenty-four, obviously. Uh twenty-four is double twelve. There's a nice proportionality there and there's also some wonderful things to do uh, which I'd encourage you to read if you want to read it to do with uh, equal multiplices which is really interesting and that's uh, also quite important for the uh, the month the fourth month of April uh, and the sixth month of June but I'm not going to go into too much of the maths but here it's where we get really interesting because if we have a look at sonnet 22 remember that is the error that we're looking at well let's have a look but when in three times fours I behold, three times four is twelve, then look I death my days should expiate, should make amends for. So he's actually told you in sonnet 22 uh, that this is, that this, it, it's twelve, not twenty-two. Okay, so if you accept this, and I hope you do, because these are just far too many coincidences for this just to be uh, speculation, um, if you accept this, also clock the days, uh, then I, I'm i pretty sure we can we can take this, actually. Um, he's playing with ambiguity, which I, he tells you, that's his last figure in the Art of English Poetry. Uh, he's playing with the ambiguity, but indeed, just as in Sonnet 22, he's just made amends for, it is in fact 12. Now, so we, we're going to now start looking, now that we've corrected this, um, at what uh, is going on here. Uh, so, well, 1717, 17, 17, it's the 17th Earl of Oxford. That's quite easy to, to work out. Uh, we have our maketh. As we said, maketh is really important because may is one of the uh, the keys in the printer's preface that's really useful for unlocking not just the sonnets, but when he reveals his identity a little bit later in the same book. So may, it's also the fifth month, month uh, V. Uh it maketh 12, well, it's the 12th of April, and it maketh 24, that's the 24th of June. 
Uh, also clock the more if you've been watching some of my previous videos or uh, Hebrew for light and the an of an or spy. If you translate an into Latin, it's or. Or is really important. So you've got that there. You've got loads of uh, things going on. Uh, but then you've got this by five and by seven. Well, 17 or well, 12 plus five is 17. But then again, 17 plus five is 22. So mm, it doesn't. Mm. And then you've got the by seven and well, I was like well what's what's going on there that's got to be important I know all of the things there are actually um, even then actually uh, have some meaning behind them but then I suddenly uh, realized actually this is to do uh, with a uh, clock face because by five and by seven if you were to draw uh, hands onto a clock face you'd make a V and that V uh, has six directly in the middle of that and that's um, quite important for what is going to come a little bit later uh, so yeah there we go we have our 12 and our 24 on may which is in between um and uh a v there okay if we just have a quick look at clock hands in sonnets just so you don't think i'm going off on one um six um, then let not winter's ragged hand deface, count the clock that tells the time, watch the clock for you, times his cruel hand, with time's injurious hand, uh, time's fell hand the face. You've got quite a lot of um, uh, quite important numbers as well for this, um, but we, we've got quite a lot of references to hands. If we have a look at the front uh, of the elements, well, we have someone who has her hands on a circular face, astronomia. Uh, and if we just kind of, well, it's circular, but if we also have a look at what she's pointing to, she's pointing to a V. Um, if we have a look at uh, this one here, and yet doth a beauty like a dial hand. Well, we've just seen one uh, before, uh, but have a look at this. Three April perfumes in three hot Junes burnt. Well, there we have April and we have June in the same line. Uh, which I think is, again, uh, quite interesting. Three is really interesting because it's also a factor of both 12 and 24. Uh, three times four is 12. Three times eight is 24. Um, you can also go around a, a clock in four, eight, 12, for instance. Uh, so three is quite important. Uh, so we have April and June there. Uh, just notice this is sonnet 104. Um, this is really important and is going to be important in a little bit. Uh, if you draw that on a clock face, 10 and 4 are directly opposite each other on a clock face, which is quite interesting. And we also have uh, some 4s there. Uh, well, if we have a look again at the front um, of the elements, we do have uh, someone playing 4 strings. If you count the number of strings, we have 4 strings and we have 10 uh, fingers. Oh, it's a bit of a weird finger there, isn't it? Um, is is that her finger going like beneath, or is it? Is is she got eleven fingers? Or no, you can't see her thumbs. So it's still ten, but uh, it's almost like her her fingers there are in the shape of a V. How interesting. Well, um, here's a picture of a clock from the Renaissance, uh, made in fifteen seventeen. The thing I want you to just note is you have a 12 and a 24 on this clock face. So if I put the 12 and the 24 on the clock face, um, familiar in the Renaissance, as we say, well, I'm sure you can see what's happening with these dates, 12 and 24. It is one complete cycle, a full rotation, a circle or an O, um, which is quite important because a circle is a continuous line, it's infinite, and we have an, uh, an Ouroboros um, there, a symbol of infinity, alpha and omega, it's, it's an infinite line. Um, well, circles are quite important, and they're particularly important in the elements because it's the first figure uh, that is defined. Of all the figures, a circle is the most perfect and therefore it is here first defined. So just clock this um, this idea of perfection and perfect. That's going to be really important um, going uh, forward. 
Uh, and if we have now start to have a look at the last page of the elements, well, the first thing you may notice is we have a circle or slightly an oval really, but it's, it is a, a circle in, in a sense. Um, and if we start to have a look at it, well, there's, there's 24 hours in a day and who's it printed by but John Day or IO or whatever that is, Day. Um, 24 hours in a day, a, a full cycle, let's say. Uh, if we have a look at some of the sonnets, oh, we have that oh, that, that circle. How summer, uh, shall summer's uh, honey breath hold out against the rackful siege of battering days? Oh, look, and we've even spelt days uh, with that E, that qualifying conceited E on the end. Um, if we have a look at what's written upon the face of this, life is death and death is life. Well, that's quite transcendent. And I'm going to include uh, Richard Fields, as we've mentioned in previous videos, uh, sign of his shop of the phoenix rising from the flames. Um, if we also, um, if we look at Sonnet 22, uh, then look, I death, my days should expiate. Well, we have death and we have days again. Um, and if we have a look at Atatis uh, Sway, uh, which means in a certain year of one's age. Well, if we look at Sonnet 22, T is the myself, that for myself I praise painting my age with beauty of thy days. Well, there we have age and thy days. So this is all referenced in the sonnets for you. Uh, good luck arguing against uh, all of this. Uh, it's in the sonnets for you. Um, and if we look uh, at Atatis Sway, well, what is the age uh, of Mr. John Day? Uh, it is 40. X, 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 X. I think that's, that's 40. Yep. Uh, so uh, if we also think about T, T is the myself. You've also got that magic E on the end of self there. Well, if we think about where T comes from, T coming from the Greek tau, and we trace back its origins, uh, we go all the way back uh, through the Semitic languages, the Phoenician uh, tav, um, and the Egyptian hieroglyph, the X, meaning mark. So we have this X, this mark. So T has its history from, well, the T is an X. It, it, it means an X. So T is the, is the myself. The X is himself. Uh, we'll see why in a bit. I just also want to make you aware, please, of our A and E ligature there, our I, uh, diphthong, our I. Uh, and also, you might notice we have some 80s, 80s, uh, is uh, AV, uh, A and V, reflections of each other in a sense, if we discount that bar in between. And you also have quite a few 80s in death, uh, for instance. Uh, at London, AT. We've got quite a few ATs. ATs are important, as I have been saying, because AT, A is the first uh, letter of the Hebrew alphabet. T is the last alphabet, first and last. Uh, that's really important. Um, we'll come back to that. Now, before we proceed any further, we're just going to um, uh, just remind ourselves what digit sum arithmetic is. Um, so, Digit sum arithmetic, it's quite simple. Digit sum of a number, say 15, is just the sum of the digits, i.e. 1 plus 5 equals 6. And then if the sum of the digits is greater than 9, the process is repeated. For example, the sum of the digits for 15, uh, 1589 uh, would be, uh, well, 1 plus 5 plus 8 plus 9 equals 23. And the sum of those digits, if we do it again, uh, would be 5, or Latinized V. So um, let's uh, let's just do well. We've 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 seen the forty already uh, there with our four x's. But if we continue uh, and have a look at this date here, fifteen uh, sixty-two. Well, if we do some digit sum arithmetic uh, and add them add those digits together, we're going to get fourteen. Fourteen, which of course has our four t in it. Uh, there's a date. Uh, and if we continue, actually, uh, with 1 plus 4, we again get our terminus of 
our V, our 5. But if we have a look at the bottom date there of 1570, and we do the same, 1570, um, well, if we add 1, 5 and 7 together, we get 13. We're just going to leave the 0 uh, where it is for the minute. Uh, 1 plus 3 obviously is 4, and we're going to add that 0 to the end of it. Uh, well, that's 40. So we have 4T. So you've got 40 three times um, on that last page, which is quite important, I would say. Um, and, well, you may... I will accept if you want to argue that this uh, trefoil cross at the top, um, which could represent 12, for instance, because it's got like four leaves of it. Uh, I will also accept if you're going to tell me that that's 4T, maybe, potentially, I'll accept it. Uh, so why is this 40 important? Well, if we look at Edward de Vere's life dates themselves, uh, let's look at specifically the years of his life. Well, that's 1550 to 1604. You may be able to see where we're going with this. If you add five and five together and you add six and four together, and because anagrams are allowed in this game, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10. You can make 10, 10, 10, 10 out of the years of his life, which of course is our 40. So Edward de Vere's years of his life can give you this number 40, which is probably why he self-identifies with it so much. Uh, and we're going to look at the meaning behind this in a little bit because that's quite important as well. Now, you, you may go, Glenn, uh, you, you're just adding things together. Why, why are you doing all of this addition, adding these things together? OK, well, let's... Um, Let's just have a look at some addition, because in the sonnets, unsurprisingly, he references addition. And by addition, me of thee, by adding one thing to my purpose, nothing. Just emphasise that nothing there. Uh, add, have added feathers to learned wings. Uh, you to your beauteous blessings add. Uh, add something more. Uh, got your all there. Added praises beside. Uh, my personal favourite, or it used to be my favourite, I now have a new favourite, of others' voices uh, that my adders sense. And also, uh, if you just notice, 112, I, I really love adders sense. I think that's very funny. Uh, but 112, if you add, if you do the digit sum analysis of that, um, then you're going uh, to get four. Um, so that's, yeah. Uh, and uh, making addition thus to thy sweet will, making addition... Thus, uh, well, another word for adding is sum, as you've already seen with our digit sum arithmetic. Uh, shall sum my count and make my old excuse, uh, proving his beauty by succession line. Uh, straight off in number two. So great a sum of sums, yet canst not live. For ever resting, uh, time leads summer on. Um, Thy summer, ere thou be distilled, uh, if thou consumest thyself in single life, um, I summon up remembrance of things past. He's very witty with how he's interlacing these references. I love it. Uh, when is thy love hath cast his utmost sum? Um, when summer's breath of mast buds discloses, uh, makes sums, summer's welcome, thrice more wished, more rare. Um, well, summer and then thrice more, I suppose that would be four summers in total. Um, uh, when sometime lofty towers uh, and brass eternal slave to mortal rage, oh, how shall summers, uh, some, some, summers, some, uh, for summer, could make summer's story tell, sometime hold my tongue, uh, summer's pride, summer's dead, uh, to leave for nothing all thy sum of good. Uh, and now my favourite, and I absolutely love this one now, uh, I, because I think it's just brilliantly witty. Um, so shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Uh, you also have um, rough winds to shake the buds of May, which again is very important. And summer's lease hath all too short a date. Well, he's literally telling you some time, some time. 
some time. He, he tells you again, just in case you didn't get it before. Uh, by thy eternal summer shall not fade. Uh, and of course, in the last lines, which was why they're so important, you have uh, 10. And if you read it the other way, 10, 10, 10. You have 40 in the last lines, which is probably why uh, uh, so long lives this and this gives life uh, to thee. Um, I love this now because I just think it's incredibly witty. Um, it's brilliant, really. Uh, so we've seen uh, his years, um, 10, 10. We add them together because we know about adding and summing. And it gives us uh, this number 40. And let me give you one or two examples in the sonnets, if I may. Uh, so 40 winters, 40, 40, I 40, fortify, fortune, fortune, um, fortune again. I, I really like this because you've got four and then you're 10. Um, 40, 40, 40, um, and 40, and eternal indeed. Uh, 40, uh, B, 40 indeed, and that was uh, number 40. Um, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, uh, fourth or 40, uh, 40, uh, 40, you can read backwards here, uh, as well, 40, uh, again, I really like this, dear Mrs, I, I would read this as 10 and then 10, 4, so dear, 10, 4, 4, 10, uh, and he even says in the same sonnet, 4, 10, uh, I bring 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. Again, I like I like this one because it's got art and four. So 40, uh, 40, 40, 40, 40. I think we I think we're getting the message. I really like this one because it is quite obvious. You can't miss that. Um, 40. Uh, now uh, that we are aware of this, perhaps I did show you this one before, but did you notice the 40? Uh, often we don't uh, see things we're not paying attention to, inattentional blindness, but hopefully you now see uh, this 40. Uh, 40, 40, 40, 40, uh, 40, 40, yeah, there's, there's quite, you get the point, there's a lot of 40s, come 40, um, 40, okay, I think, I think I've made the point, there's over 50 examples for you, okay, that's evidence, um, but there we go. Uh, 10 in the sonnets, well actually you can do exactly the same, I'm not going to give you so many examples this time, but I do love his wordplay, contented, day, we've got our day again, fortune, uh, B, T, T, ring, well you've seen a, re, uh, a ring uh, of um, before in, in the portrait of the time, we've got, I love the word love, uh, because it has this 10 in, uh, 40, uh, their style I'll read his for his love. It's great. And you've got lots of examples of these, particularly of 10, 10 in glory, um, contents, tens, uh, the tenure of jealousy with a 10 in there. Uh, again, you can read backwards. It's fine here. It's the same letters, uh, 10, um, 40, 40, 40, the barren tender of a poet's debt, rotten, uh, although in me each part will be forgot, 10. I just love this. Now, I particularly love this one uh, because he references the elements. Like, I, th I think that's just brilliant, quite frankly. He's, he's literally referencing uh, the book of where he is explaining this, um, which is brilliant. Um, and again, uh, love with our 10, my life being made of four with two alone. That's really important. Um, recounting it to me. So you've got elements recounting it to me. He is literally telling you uh, what is going on. Now we're just going to think about this, uh, this 10, this X, uh, this T. For a second. Now, the first thing to say, it's a cross, and De Vere was very, very religious, uh, so that's really important. Um, and also on the front of the elements, of course, uh, you have uh, Polybius with our T, or our cross, 
really is spelled out for you if you if you look. And of course, within Polybus, we have our 10. It's all there for you. Uh, and if we have a look at our T, uh, our X, well, what does our X contain but 4T itself? So your X contains your 4T. So it's just, it's beautiful. Like the play of symbols here and meaning is just magnificent. Uh, you can also make your X out of two Vs, which is probably why that double V or de V is so important because you can make your, your X, your T, out of your two Vs. That was um, how he signed off in a letter to John uh, Lilly. Uh, thank you, Alexander Wall. I uh, probably wouldn't have known that if it wasn't for you, so thank you. Um, and, well, <laughs> you can also make your X from two L's, which is probably why this double L, for instance, in true original copies, which you'll see on the first folio title page, is so important. You have those two L's there, um, which also could stand for love and lust if you read the art of English poesy. Um, well, if we have a look at Geometria on the front, well, she's holding a board uh, of 10, but what is she also pointing to? She's pointing to this 10. This IO, this 10, uh, you can see quite clearly um, it's not joined. Yeah, um, She's pointing to this 10. So you can see that this 10 is really important. But why is this 10 so important? Well, 10 is the number symbolising the completion of a cycle, which we've already seen. Um, God's authority and perfection of divine order, e.g. the Ten Commandments. Uh, 10 is also important because it's made from both one symbolising the self, and zero, nothing, of which De Vere uh, became. And he does tell you in this in Sonnet 136, among a number one is reckoned none. Then in the number, let me pass and told, though in thy store's account I one must be, for nothing hold me, so it please thee hold, that nothing me, a something sweet to thee. So he is uh, both... Um, one and zero and of course if we do some digit some arithmetic with the number of that sonnet you get 10 he's telling you why he's 10 it he's becoming nothing the um the, yeah he he pre predates cubits he's one and zero at the same time um and also if we think about the other symbolism well we human beings have 10 uh fingers um, and also <laughs> if we geek out a little bit it is the fourth triangular number so if you count those black dots you're going to see that there are ten so one three six ten is the fourth triangular number tetrads are important uh, so if we also think about apollo apollo is really important as i've been talking about in the previous videos um, apollo and i did show you this before uh, he likes to hang around with nine muses, so much so uh, that he is the effectively the tenth muse. And it even says this, be now the tenth muse, ten times more in worth. And you've got the uh, Duff Give Invention light there. Um, oh, and look at that. Uh, then those old nine which rhymers uh, invocate and he that calls on thee, let him bring for tea. So, ten. Or actually, that's 10 in uh, the font that I'm, I'm currently using in this PowerPoint. Uh, that's I.O. So I.O., if you know your Greek mythology, wonderful story. Um, Jove falls in love uh, with uh, a priestess um, and to protect her from his wife, because um, he's being a bit naughty, he changes her into a, a, a white heifer, a cow, a female ox um, but his his wife Joe's wife um, do you know cannot be uh, cannot be fooled so she asks for a gift uh, of this beautiful white uh, heifer uh, and she takes this cow and she has the cow protected by Argos uh, who is covered in a um, hundred I think it's a hundred uh, eyes uh, all across his skin 
um, and uh, Jove or Zeus uh, sends Hermes uh, to kill um, uh, Argos by uh, his beautiful music and his wonderful stories lulling him into sleep and then he slays uh, Argos. Um, Hermes is important because on the front of the elements you have Mercury and uh, Mercury is of course the Latinized version of Hermes uh, and he's right bang on the front of that. So he's the person who kills Argos to free um, Io who then uh, wanders across the Ionian Sea. Uh, she eventually does, was a happy ending to the story, transforms back into her original form and then fathers or mothers, I should say, um, a, a breed of uh, a progeny of brilliant people. Um, well, this is important because Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, is the complete inversion of this story. He is uh, the Earl of Oxford and he is transforming, metamorphosing into uh, Io or Ten. So he's becoming uh, Ten um, to protect himself or to disappear so he can do great work. Uh, and I hope uh, that there's a similar ending to his story uh, that in years to come, um, then he may regain his original form uh, from his ten. Um, now, I also want to show you this because I love this. Uh, here's um, uh, two uh, consenting adults holding a, a lobster. Don't want to know what's going on there. But the important thing is um, a lobster has... 10 uh, legs and they're also holding a sun there uh, I think that's very funny uh, so uh, if we think about this if ye take four times to make it uh, 20 if you take uh, he's talking about five there uh, the line CV is five if you take it three times it makes 15 if you take it four times it makes 20 so let's just have a quick uh, look at 20 because 20 would be four of these 4 times 5 equals 20. Now, 20 occurs in the sonnets only once. When I break 20, I am perjured most. Why is he perjured most? Well, because I am 4 sworn. Uh, but why two oaths breach do I accuse thee? For all my vows. Uh, he's sworn. For I have sworn. For I have sworn. He's literally saying this four times. That he's sworn uh, for uh, X's. For... Uh, for T. So he doesn't want to break his oath. Uh, if we also have a look, I lose both uh, Twain. Of course, that lose has got a 10 in it. Both Twain is 20. And both, for my sake, lay me on this cross, this X, this T. And 45, in tender embrace of love, there's your 10. My life being made of four with two alone. Well, indeed it is. His birth years give you a 20 and his death years give you 20 and he has sworn to this number of 40. So why is 40 so important? Well 40 is often used to designate important time periods and epochs particularly in biblical uh, history and it's uh, the death of oneself and spiritual rebirth. This idea of transcendence again e.g. Noah's Ark and the Floods, that was 40 days and 40 nights. Moses on Mount Sinai, Jesus uh, in the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus from resurrection to ascension, 40 days. Uh, King David and King Solomon's reign, both 40 years. And um, I, I believe a lot of meaning and symbolism takes uh, root in functional things in nature. So if you think human gest gestation itself... Um, is approximately 40 weeks, which is probably why 40s used to designate these important time periods of, of rebirth or birth. Uh, and also to geek out a little bit, uh, the fourth octagonal number. Um, so, well, an octagon is an eight-sided shape. Here's an octagon there. If we square a circle, uh, we... Uh, could make an octagon, a circle, symbol of heaven, square, symbol of earth. So the octagon is quite a transcendent shape. 
Uh, if you want to see it as its fourth octagonal number, there it is. It's the one in yellow. Um, it's quite important. Eight is also the symbol, there's another Ouroboros for you, of infinity and eternity. Uh, it's also a pseudo-perfect number. So some of its parts, some of its factors add together to make 40, but not all of them. Semi-perfect or pseudo-perfect. Almost perfect, but still human. Uh, so, uh, Ea, uh, Ea or Enki. Um, well, it turns out, um, beginning in the second millennium, uh, the Babylonian the uh, theologians classified their major gods uh, in a hierarchical numerical order. And it turns out that Ea is represented by the number 40. So there's someone else in history who's been represented by this number of 40. And what was he the god of? Uh, I should also point out, um, do you remember this uh, A-E, this I, um, this ligature? Well, you could argue that's an anagram of uh, ear, uh, which I believe it is. And Enki or ear is the uh, Sumerian god of water, knowledge, wisdom, mischief, crafts and creation. He was later known as ear um, in uh, Akkadian mythology. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Interestingly, N, uh, N means Lord, E means Temple. It's likely that Ea is the Sumerian short for Lord of Water. <laughs> uh, that's more important than I have time to go into, but, uh, as Enki is God of Water. Uh, that's really important because at the Westminster Shakespeare Monument, uh, what is Shakespeare pointing to? But temples. Well, he's pointing to the Ian temples, but that's crazy because temple means e or e means temple i should say um so that's just perfect that's just so brilliant in so many ways uh, just to remind you his arms are in an e shape as well and if you compare what's written on this scroll to what's in the tempest and you note the differences just as the e is missing there and is in uh, the tempest you're going to find loads of additional e's added so it really really is important um, as I've talked about. Well, um, as uh, De Beer teaches in the Art of English Poesy, it's not just for the nonce, but it's also auricular, it's for the ear. Uh, so 40, if you think about the sound of 40, well, we have for our vowels our or and our e. Um, or, as I've said, is really important. Remember, uh, if you uh, translate that um, in Greek, uh, tavos, and you're going to get your e. So it actually means the same thing, which is brilliant. So or forty, orty, um, and the if we think about the consonants, uh, the f and v, well, they're both uh, labial dental fricatives. Apart from one, is voiced, and one is voiceless. So f, f, there's no voice to it. The v, v, is voiced, which is really interesting. Uh, so. Um, same the same consonant, but one with sound and one without, uh, and our T, which is important. Okay, and that's that's the sound of it. Well, the four T is quite literally uh, Veer's mark as well, uh, because four in German is Veer. Four in German is Veer, uh, and T coming from a Tav and Taf and all that uh, in Hebrew, um, meaning mark. So it is quite literally the mark. Of Veer. So there's just so many levels to meaning, uh, of meaning to 40 and why he self-identifies as 40. Now, if we have a look at other references to 40, uh, not in the sonnets, well, you may have seen this uh, on the scroll. We have 40s uh, in the uh, Stratford Monument, uh, above where Shakespeare uh, is apparently uh, buried. Uh, you have uh, this, uh, 40. You also have in Hamlet, the last Hamlet's heir, so to say, is 40 in brass. Now, I adore all of the names of the characters in Hamlet because, like, his name and culture is on point, right? He, there's some wit of uh, how he's named his characters, let's say that. Uh, but I love this, 40 in brass, who takes on uh, the throne uh, after Hamlet. Uh, in Ben Jonson's dedication, you have 
4t, and you've also got 6e's, uh, 6 important as we shall see later, and in the uh, dedication to the sonnets, the last word uh, is 4th or 4t, but as we've seen again in previous videos, our eta, our h, uh, actually is an e, um, that's where it comes from in Greek, eta is a, is a long e, so we actually have 4t. Adventure in setting 40. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. It's just brilliant. Uh, if we think about the globe, well, the globe within this wooden O reference, uh, which we'll have a look at in a second, well, the globe is a circle. His theatre, where a lot of the Shakespeare plays are being performed, is a circle uh, itself. And if we also think about how many sides the globe has. Uh, they found some of the ruins um, and they could ascertain that there were 20. So there's 20 sides. Uh, this uh, Akos Sagan has 20 sides uh, to it. Again, and yep, the globe has 10 inside it as well. If we look at where this is from, this is from the life of Henry V, Henry the V. Mm. Uh, which is really important. You'll find this um, in uh, the, uh, the the folios, not in the quattro versions. Uh, but if we just zoom in and we have a look at it, note it's uh, page 69. That's really important. Just remember that. Um, well, actually, there's loads of really brilliant things that are going on here. Uh, watch for the ras, the ands, the ors. That makes sense if you've watched the previous videos. Uh, so... Uh, for a muse of fire, well, a muse of fire, tenth muse, uh, Apollo, then that's the sun, that's a ball of fire, uh, that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for stage princes to act and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Uh, we've got lots of things, you've got ten. Um, then should the war, oh, you've got the, uh, the Ra there, like Harry, Ra, like himself, E on the end, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, uh, unraised spirits that hath dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring for tea. So great an object, just note all of the O's in this as well. Uh, can this cockpit hold? We'll notice there's a 10 there in the hold. Uh, so yes, it can hold 10. Uh, the vast fields, remember Richard Field, the printer, Field references are always important of France, there's an an in there as well. Or and or may, oh, there's a may, oh God, there's just so much meaning in this. Uh, we cram within this would know the very casks that did affright the heir of Agincourt. Oh, pardon, since a crocked figure, uh, crocked uh, could mean drunk. Um, or it could also mean wounded, which is important. Uh, may, again, may attest in little place a million. Uh, I love this because we've got may and in a little place, much like nothing, which he tells you, and let us ciphers, archaic meaning naught or nothing, to let uh, to this great uh, uh, account of your imaginary forces work within, uh, suppose within the girdle of these walls. Well, we've just seen uh, that the walls of the globe itself is made of 20 and now confined to, 20 times two is 40. Uh, monarchies, whose high up reared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Um, there's loads of great things with the R's and the rows there that you can see. Uh, peace out our imperfections with your thoughts into a thousand parts. Uh, divide one man and make imaginary puissance. Uh, think when we talk of horses, the oar there, uh, that you see them printing their proud hooves. Well, if we think the anchor or spy, uh, and of course means oar, he's referring and the printing of the, uh, the horse's hooves. Well, that's the mark of the horse, and he's talking about the printing mark. Uh, I, the receiving earth, notice how that is actually an epsilon. Uh, that is, it's, 
it's emphasising that E, which again means the all. Um, he's telling you what he's doing. Uh, 40, really obvious as well, really obvious there. 40 is your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping or, <laughs> we've got that or, uh, times, uh, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass, uh, for which supply admit me chorus to this history, who prologue like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play. Exit, that X. Um, so this is, uh, this is just brilliant. Now, one thing I really want to draw your attention to, because I think this is lovely, uh, is this bit here. Now, you're only going to find this in the uh, first folio. You won't find this in the Quattro versions, and you won't find this uh, in the second folio either. It's only going to be in the first folio. There's a reason for that, uh, which we'll, I'll, I'll explain uh, shortly. Well, can you see there's a little dash there? It's kind of making it ooh, a little bit tricky to see what's going on. Uh, so here's another first folio version without that mark. Now, notice the Y and the Y. One is much longer than the other. One might read that as many years, or one might read that as many veers. Mm. I really love that, uh, which uh, I've, I've no doubt that uh, Henry, his son, and his daughters probably were in some uh, form of aid uh, for what the veer is pulling off here. Um, sonnet 101, uh, which is where I'm going to conclude this section uh, for the most part. Excuse not silence, so forty lies in thee to make him much outlive a gilded tomb and to be praised of ages yet to be. Then do thy office, muse, I teach thee how to make him seem long hence as he shows now. Uh, indeed, he does. You've got that ten there. Uh, to seem ten hence as he shows now indeed he does um, now I should probably mention this uh, these are very deliberate dates um, sonnet 94 uh, for sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds um, this is the inscription on the title page, uh, Verisit Vulnere uh, Veritas, uh, Truth from Wounds. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say too much about this. Uh, I've written about that, I spent probably about a third of the book when I kind of re re realised this. You can go read it there. Uh, <laughs> just le read the last couple of sonnets. I can't read them without crying. Um, enjoy. Uh, Sonnet 55, uh, the living record of your memory uh, against death and all oblivious enmity. I should say, right, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I should say, we don't condemn uh, Socrates uh, for dying for truth, nor do we uh, condemn Jesus. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think at all he should be condemned for that. Uh, Sonnet 55, the living record of your memory against death and all oblivious enmity. Shall you pace forty? Your praise shall still find room, even in the eyes of all posterity, that wear this world out to the ending doom, which, given climate change, probably isn't that far off. Uh, so till the judgment that yourself arise, uh, you live in this and dwell in lovers' eyes. Uh, he dwells in my eyes, that's for sure. And perfect numbers. Well, we. I'm just going to wrap up by quickly uh, explaining the dates of publication for you. Uh, because as we've seen, uh, we've been looking at some perfect numbers uh, for, for a while now. And we know that perfection is really important. Uh, so um, this is in the preface, uh, which apparently is by John D. It's by De Beer. Uh, so, uh, because Euclid here doth make mention of diverse kinds of numbers and also defineth the same, he is talking in this paragraph about the property of individual numbers, um, and one such is that it is a perfect number and hath many more conditions, um, and also other numbers have got properties such as uh, 9, 12, which we've seen, and so 
fourth for T. Um, and he also, in the next paragraph, goes on to talk about 12 and 24 again. You're going to see lots of these. Uh, they're also, um, well, 12 half thereof is 6, a perfect number, and 24 is 4 times 6. So this perfect number of 6 is both a factor of 12 and 24, uh, which is, well probably why 12 and 24 are one of the reasons why they're so important, which is less than it as being the double thereof, and of this consideration of numbers ariseth. Well, what is a perfect number? I'm sure most of you know, but just as a reminder, um, I'm going to let well Euclid define this, uh, as the parts of 6 are 1, 2 and 3, i.e. the factors of 6, Added together makes 6, the whole number. So you take the parts of them together, 1 plus 2 plus 3 it gives you 6. Uh, so likewise is 28 a perfect number. Namely, 1, 2, 4, 7 and 14 added together makes 28. Uh, and for their rareness and great perfection, they are of marvellous use in magic and in the secret part of philosophy. The love of wisdom. Well, if we have a look at the Angkor Spite, this is actually a copy from a first edition. I wanted to show you this just so you can really can see this. Uh, well, if you have a look at those clouds, um, which which are quite cerebral looking, I've, I've no doubt he saw the uh, uh, the creation of Adam um, on the Sistine Chapel. So. He, like he's he's probably been influenced by that. It's quite cerebral looking. But if you have a look at those clouds, what can you see but a reflected six? Perfect. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, I adore this. So why six? Well, it's a perfect number. Six is one plus two plus three, as we've seen. It's the uh, sum of its parts. Um, uh, Euclid describes this as the teleos alithmos. Uh, the final, ending, complete, perfect number. Um, and as we've said, it's of great use in magic and secret philosophy. It's also the creative number. Now, the reason it's the creative number is how many days did God create the earth in? And the answer to that is not seven, it's six. On the seventh day he rested, he created the earth and mankind, uh, humanity in six days on the sixth day man and woman were created um now you can also we love transformations he loved metamorphoses uh so transformations are are he adores them um so if we rotate uh that six we make nine nine muses for instance a number of inspiration also completion in a sense uh, well, why is this important? Well, let's have a look at this sonnet, uh, 119. Oh, but let, that's that's one one. So here's a nice bit of cognitive dissonance for you. We have um, two uh, sonnets that are both numbered 119. Uh, one so this he's really kind of showing and proving this to you so you can really see this. Um, and he even says this. This is actually 116. Uh, um, and you, you can see this for yourself on the British Library uh, website if you want. Uh, if this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Well, there is an error, if this be error upon me proved, which is proved, uh, nor no man. Well, this actually still holds true uh, because he became nothing or no man. So the integrity of that logically still holds true. Um, so... Yeah, it's brilliant. But he's proving to you that he's rotating the six and the nine and he can do this. And you will see this in the dates of publication. So here's the Art of English Posey. You can see that signature and you can see it's actually been rotated a little bit. It's not quite uh, straight. It has been rotated, which is a kind of telltale sign of his signature mark of six, the creative number. Uh, Venus and Adonis, The Rape of Lucrece. And the sonnets itself, which is beautiful, because you've got both ten and six and nine. Beautiful. Couldn't have chosen a better date, in my opinion, 
uh, to publish those very cryptic and beautifully witty uh, sonnets. And lastly, but least, which I hope you can see and understand now, the first folio is published in 1623, which of course uh, is an anagram of both uh, the perfect number, the sum of its parts, one, two and three, uh, published in 1623. It's perfection. The first folio is the perfect edition, which is why we should always work with the first folio, because all of those witty uh, elements that he's put in will be in the first folio. They're not printing mistakes. Uh, De Vere is trying to tell you something. Uh, you just have to uh, pay attention to it um, and read it. Uh, so if we have a look back at the Art of English Posy uh, title page, um, well, we have our 1589 at the bottom. You can see that signature uh, rotated six. Uh, I actually think the Art of English Posy, the longest job application or one of them in history, um, uh, I actually think it was published in 1586. Just If you rotate that nine, uh, that would make sense because that's when he started receiving his uh, annuity. Um, which he received every uh, year of his life um, until his death. Uh, so, and then his son, I think, received some of it as well. How interesting. Um, so if we do some digit sum analysis, uh, arithmetic again, just on the left-hand side, 1 plus 5 is 6. You get this wonderful kind of symmetry of this 6 and 9 with the 8 in between with your infinity. 8's also... Uh, is well the letter of the alphabet is H or your eta, uh, which is lovely. Uh, I also really like. And if you do uh, some kind of final digit sum arithmetic, you're going to get your five, your V. Important because the anchor is pointing to a V, but the date itself is also five or V, uh, which is why that's important. Now to return back to whence we uh, started, um, we have this. 28th, well, you should know now that 28 is the second perfect number, uh, and also 2 plus 8 equals 10, which is why it's doubly perfect, because it's not just a perfect number, but if you if you sum those digits, you get 10, which is a number uh, that is representing uh, De Vere. Uh, you also have May, which is the fifth month, and if you sum 1589, you have V again. So you effectively have your double V signature. He signed off 10 double V perfectly, which is why that date is so important and also absolutely mesmerising and very brilliant. So well done, uh, Edward, for just being incredible. Uh, so I'm going to end uh, now um, with this because I think it's really beautiful. Uh, there are a lot of sixes in there and I think it's really beautiful. So thank you very much uh, for uh, watching um, and I hope um, in future uh, De Vere may receive the praise uh, he rightly deserves. He certainly does because my tongue is not mute and can praise. Thank you very much.